Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth had Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. Gomer had Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Tagarma. Javan had Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. Ham had Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Cush had Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Saptika, Rama had Sheba and Dedan. Cush had Nimrod, the first great hero on earth. Mizraim was ancestor to the Ludim, the Anamim, the Lehabim, the Naphtahim, the Pathrosim, the Kaslon, and the Kaphtarim from whom the Philistines descended. Canaan had Sidon, his firstborn, and Hate, and was ancestor to the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Jergeshites, the Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Arvidites, the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. Shem had Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, Aram, Uzi, Hull, Gether, and Meshech. Arphaxad had Shelah and Shelah had Eber. Eber had two sons, Peleg, Division, because in his time the earth was divided up, his brother was Joktan. Joktan had Almadad, Shaleph, Hazarmaveth, Jera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Ebel, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab, all sons of Joktan. The three main branches in summary, Shem, Arphaxad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Ru, Sarag, Nahar, Tura, and Abram, Abraham. And Abraham had Isaac and Ishmael. Abraham's family tree developed along these lines, Ishmael had Nebaioth, his firstborn, then Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Naphish, and Kadima, the Ishmael branch. Keturah, Abraham's concubine, gave birth to Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Then Jokshan had Sheba and Dedan. And Midian had Epha, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. These made up the Keturah branch. Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had Esau and Israel, Jacob. Esau had Eliphaz, Ruel, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. Eliphaz had Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, Kenas, Timnah, and Amalek. And Ruel had Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. Seir then had Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. Lotan had Hori and Homam. Timnah was Lotan's sister. Shobal had Alien, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. Zibion had Aya and Anna. Anna had Dishan. Dishan had Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Karen. Ezer had Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. And Dishan had Uzi and Aaron. A list of the kings who ruled in the country of Edom before Israel had a king, Bela son of Beer, his city was Dinhaba, Bela died, Jobab son of Zerah from Basra was the next king, Jobab died, Hushim from the country of the Temanites was the next king, Hushim died, Hadad son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, was the next king, his city was Avath, Hadad died. Samla from Misrika was the next king, Samla died, Shal from Rehoboth by the river was the next king, Shal died, Baal. Hanan son of Akbar was the next king. Baal Hanan died, Hadad was the next king, his city was Pau and his wife was Mehedabal daughter of Matrit, the daughter of Mizahab, last of all Hadad died. The chieftains of Edom after that were chief Timnah, chief Alva, Chief Jetheth, Chief Oholobama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinion, Chief Kenas, Chief Taman, 
Chief Mibzer, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These were the chieftains of Edom. Israel's, that is, Jacob's, sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Judah had Er, Onan, and Shelah, their mother was Bathswa the Canaanite. Er, Judah's firstborn, was so bad before God that God killed him. Judah also had Perez and Zerah by his daughter-in-law Tamar, a total of five sons. Perez had Hezron and Hamel, Zerah had Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcal, and Darda, five sons. Carmi had Achar, who brought doom on Israel when he violated a holy ban. Ethan's son was Azariah. And Hezron had Jeremiel, Ram, and Kelabai. Ram had Ammonadab and Ammonadab had Nashon, a prominent leader in the Judah family. Nashon had Salmon and Salmon had Boaz. Boaz had Obed and Obed had Jesse. Jesse's firstborn was Eliab, followed by Abinadab, Shermaiah, Nethanel, Raddai, Ozam, and finally David, David was the seventh. Their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah gave birth to three sons, Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail was the mother of Amasa, the father was Jether the Ishmaelite. Caleb son of Hezron had children by his wife Azubah and also by Jerioth. Azubah's sons were Jeshur, Shobab, and Arden. After Azubah died, Caleb married Ephrath, who gave birth to her. Her had Uri and Uri had Bezalel. Some time later Hezron married the daughter of Machir the father of Gilead, he was sixty years old when he married her, she gave birth to Segub. Then Segub had Jair who owned twenty-three cities in the land of Gilead. Geshur and Aram captured the nomadic villages of Jair and Kanath and their satellite settlements, sixty towns. These all belonged to Machir the father of Gilead. After the death of Hezron, Caleb married Ephrathah the wife of his father Hezron, she then gave birth to Ashur the father of Tico. The sons of Jeremiel, Hezron's firstborn, Ram his firstborn, followed by Buna, Oren, Ozam, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had another wife whose name was Adara, she gave birth to Onam. The sons of Ram, Jeremiel's firstborn, Maz, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam, Shammai and Jada, the sons of Shammai, Nadab and Abishur. Abishur's wife was Abihail, she gave birth to Aban and Malid. Nadab had sealed and Apaim. Sealed died leaving no sons. Apaim had Ishi, Ishi had Shishan, and Shishan had Alei. Jada, Shammai's brother, had Jether and Jonathan. Jether died leaving no sons. Jonathan had Peleth and Zaza, this is the family tree of the sons of Jeremiel. Shishan had no sons, only daughters. But Shishan had an Egyptian servant, Jarha. Shishan married his daughter to Jarha and she gave birth to Atai. Atai had Nathan, Nathan had Zabad, Zabad had Ephlo, Ephlo had Obed, Obed had Jehu, Jehu had Azariah, Azariah had Helez, Helez had Elisa, Elisa had Sismai, Sismai had Shalom, Shalom had Jechamiah, and Jechamiah had Elishama. Jeremiel's brother Caleb had a son, his firstborn, named Misha, Misha had Ziph, Ziph's son was Mersha the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron, Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema had Raim the father of Jorkim, Rechem had Shammai. Shammai's son was Mayan and Mayan was the father of Bethzur. Caleb's concubine Ephah gave birth to Haran, 
Moza, and Gazes, Haran had Gazes. The sons of Jadai, Regem, Jotham, Gashan, Pelet, Epha, and Shaph. Another concubine of Caleb, Maka, gave birth to Sheber and Tirana. She also bore Shaph the father of Madmanna and Shiva the father of Macbina and Jibia. Caleb's daughter was Aksa. These made up the Caleb branch of the family tree. The sons of her, Ephrathah's firstborn, Shobal who had Kiriath Jerim, Salma who had Bethlehem, and Hereph father of Beth Gader. The family of Shobal, father of Kiriath Jerim, Hero, half of the population of Manahath, the families of Kiriath Jerim, the Ethrites, the Puthites, the Shemathites, and the Mishraites. The Zorathites and Eshtaelites also came from this line. The sons of Salma, Bethlehem, the Natophathites, Atroth Beth Joab, half of the Manahathites, the Zorites, and the families of Sophron who lived at Jabez, the Tirathites, the Shimathites, and the Sukathites. They made up the Kenite who came from Hamath the father of the house of Rechab. These are the sons that David had while he lived at Hebron, his firstborn was Amnon by Ahinom of Jezreel, second, Daniel by Abigail of Carmel, third, Absalom born of Maka, daughter of Talmai king of Geshur, fourth, Adonijah born of Haggith, fifth, Shephatiah born of Abidal, sixth, Ithrim born of his wife Egla. He had these six sons while he was in Hebron, he was king there for seven years and six months that he went on to be king in Jerusalem for another thirty-three years. These are the sons he had in Jerusalem, first Shammua, then Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Bathsheba daughter of Amiel was the mother of these four. And then there were another nine sons, Ibhar, Elishua, Eliphalet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, Eliphalet, David's sons, plus Tamar their sister. There were other sons by his concubines. In the next generation Solomon had Rehoboam, who had Abijah, who had Asa, who had Jehoshaphat, who had Jehoram, who had Ahaziah, who had Josh, who had Amaziah, who had Azariah, who had Jotham, who had Ahaz, who had Hezekiah, who had Manasseh, who had Ammon, who had Josiah. Josiah's firstborn was Johanan, followed by Jehoiakim, then Zedekiah, and finally Shalom. Jehoiakim's sons were Jeconiah, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. The sons of Jeconiah born while he was captive in Babylon, Shealtiel, Malkirim, Padiah, Shenazar, Jechemiah, Hashemah, and Nedabiah. Padiah had Zerubbabel and Shimi, Zerubbabel had Meshullam and Hananiah. Shelomith was their sister. And then five more, Hashubah, Ohol, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Jushabhezd. Hananiah's sons were Pelatiah and Jesheah. There were also sons of Rephaiah, sons of Arnon, sons of Obadiah, and sons of Shechaniah. Shechaniah had Shemaiah who in his turn had Hadash, Egal, Bariah, Neariah, and Shaphat, six of them. Neariah had three sons, Gilioenai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam. And Elioenai had seven sons, Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peliah, Akub, Johanan, Deliah, and Anani. Sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Rhea, Shobal's son, had Jehoth, and Jehoth had Ahumai and Lahad. These made up the families of the Zorathites. Sons of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash. Their sister was named Hazelponi. Penel had Geder and Ezer had Husha. These were the sons of her, firstborn son of Ephrathah, who was the father of Bethlehem. Asher the father of Tico had two wives, 
Gila and Nara. Nara gave birth to Ahuzam, Hefer, Temani, and Hahashtari, Nara's children. Gila's sons were Zerath, Zohar, Ethnan, and Kaz, who had a nub, Hazobiba, and the families of Aharhel son of Haram. Jabez was a better man than his brothers, a man of honor. His mother had named him Jabez, oh, the pain, saying, a painful birth. I bore him in great pain. Jabez prayed to the God of Israel, Bless me, O oh bless me. Give me land, large tracts of land. And provide your personal protection, don't let evil hurt me. God gave him what he asked. Kalub, Shoah's brother, had Mehir, Mehir had Eshton, Eshton had Beth Rapha, Pasea, and Tehina, who founded Iar Naash, city of smiths. These were known as the men of Rika. The sons of Kenas, Othniel and Sariah, the sons of Othniel, Hathath and Meonothai. Meonothai had Ophrah, Sariah had Joab, the founder of Guharashim, colony of artisans. The sons of Caleb son of Jephunneh, Iru, Elah, and Nam, the son of Elah, Kenas. The sons of Jehalalel, Ziph, Zipha, Tyria, and Asarel. The sons of Ezra, Jether, Mird, Ephor, and Jalen. One of Mird's wives, Pharaoh's daughter Bethiah, gave birth to Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba the father of Eshtemoa. His Judean wife gave birth to Jared father of Geder, Heber father of Soko, and Jekuthiel father of Zenoah. The sons of Hodiah's wife, Nahum's sister, the father of Kila the Garmite, and Eshtemoa the Makathite. The sons of Shimon, Amnon, Rinna, Ben-Hanan, and Tylan, the sons of Ishi, Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth. The sons of Shelah son of Judah, Er the father of Lika, Lada the father of Mershah and the family of linen workers at Beth Ashbi, Jokim, the men of Koziba, and Josh and Seraph, who ruled in Moab and Jeshubilium. These records are from very old traditions. They were the potters who lived at Netaim and Gedera, resident potters who worked for the king. The Simeon family tree, Nemuel, Jamin, Jerib, Zira, and Shal, Shal had Shalom, Shalom had Mipsam, and Mipsam had Mishma. The sons of Mishma, Hamuel had Zachar and Zachar had Shimi. Shimi had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brothers were not nearly as prolific and never became a large family like Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Malada, Hazar Shul, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susim, Beth Bairi, and Sharaim. They lived in these towns until David became king. Other settlements in the vicinity were the five towns of Etam, Ein, Rimen, Token, and Ashen, and all the villages around these towns as far as Balath. These were their settlements. And they kept good family records. Meshabab, Jamlech, Joshua the son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu the son of Joshabiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Aziel, Elioenai, Jacoba, Jeshoheah, Hesiah, Adiel, Jezamiel, Benaiah, and Ziza the son of Shurfai, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah, all these were the leaders in their families. They prospered and increased in numbers so that they had to go as far as Geder, Gerar, to the east of the valley looking for pasture for their flocks. And they found it, lush pasture, lots of elbow room, peaceful and quiet. Some Hamites had lived there in former times. But the men in these family trees came when Hezekiah was king of Judah and attacked the Hamites, tearing down their tents and houses. There was nothing left of them, as you can see today. 
Then they moved in and took over because of the great pasture land. Five hundred of these Simonites went on and invaded the hill country of Seir, led by Pelatiah, Neariah, Rephaiah, and Uzziel, the sons of Ishi. They killed all the escaped Amalekites who were still around. And they still live there. The family of Reuben the firstborn of Israel, though Reuben was Israel's firstborn, after he slept with his father's concubine, a defiling act, his rights as the firstborn were passed on to the sons of Joseph son of Israel. He lost his firstborn place in the family tree. And even though Judah became the strongest of his brothers and King David eventually came from that family, the firstborn rights stayed with Joseph. The sons of Reuben, firstborn of Israel, Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel, Shemaiah his son, Gog his son, Shimi his son, Micah his son, Rhea his son, Baal his son, and Bera his son, whom Tiglath Pileser king of Assyria took into exile. Bera was the prince of the Reubenites. Bera's brothers are listed in the family tree by families, first Jeel, followed by Zechariah, then Bela son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel. Joel lived in the area from Aroer to Nebo and Balmian. His family occupied the land up to the edge of the desert that goes all the way to the Euphrates River, since their growing herds of livestock spilled out of Gilead. During Saul's reign they fought and defeated the Hagrites, they then took over their tents and lived in them on the eastern frontier of Gilead. The family of Gad were their neighbors in Bashan, as far as Salika, Joel was the chief, Shafam the second in command, and then Janae, the judge in Bashan. Their brothers, by families, were Michael, Meshullam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber, seven in all. These were the sons of Abahel son of Huri, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahi son of Abdeel, the son of Guni, was head of their family. The family of Gad lived in Gilead and Bashan, including the outlying villages and extending as far as the pastures of Sharon. They were all written into the official family tree during the reigns of Jotham king of Judah and Jeroboam king of Israel. The families of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 men trained for war, physically fit and skilled in handling shield, sword, and bow. They fought against the Hagrites, Jetur, Naphish, and Nodab. God helped them as they fought. God handed the Hagrites and all their allies over to them, because they cried out to him during the battle. God answered their prayers because they trusted him. They plundered the Hagrite herds and flocks, 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, and 2,000 donkeys. They also captured 100,000 people. Many were killed, because the battle was God's. They lived in that country until the exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh had a large population. They occupied the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, that is, to Sinir, Mount Hermon. The heads of their families were Ephor, Ishi, Eliel, Osriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel, brave warriors, famous, and heads of their families. But they were not faithful to the god of their ancestors. They took up with the ungodly gods of the peoples of the land whom God had gotten rid of before they arrived. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul king of Assyria, Tiglath Pileser king of Assyria, to take the families of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile. He deported them to Hala, Haber, Hara, and the river of Gozan. They've been there ever since. 
The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath were Umram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The children of Umram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Eliezer had Phinehas, Phinehas had Abishua, Abishua had Bucky, Bucky had Uzzi, Uzzi had Zerahiah, Zerahiah had Meraeth, Meraeth had Amariah, Amariah had Ahitub, Ahitub had Zadok, Zadok had Ahamaz, Ahamaz had Azariah, Azariah had Johanan, and Johanan had Azariah, who served as priest in the temple Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah had Amariah, Amariah had Ahitub, Ahitub had Zadok, Zadok had Shalom, Shalom had Hilkiah, Hilkiah had Azariah, Azariah had Sariah, and Sariah had Jehozadak. Jehozadak went off to exile when God used Nebuchadnezzar to take Judah and Jerusalem into exile. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimi. The sons of Kohath were Umram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. These are the Levitical clans according to families, the sons of Gershon were Libni his son, Jehoth his son, Zima his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, and Jetherai his son. The sons of Kohath were Ammonadab his son, Korah his son, Asur his son, Elkanah his son, Ebiasaph his son, Asur his son, Tahoth his son, Uriel his son, Isaiah his son, and Shal his son. The sons of Elkanah were Amasai and Ahimoth, Elkanah his son, Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeraham his son, and Elkanah his son. The sons of Samuel were Joel his firstborn son and Abijah his second. The sons of Merari were Mali, Libni his son, Shimi his son, Uzzah his son, Shermeah his son, Haggaiah his son, and Isaiah his son. These are the persons David appointed to lead the singing in the house of God after the chest was placed there. They were the ministers of music in the place of worship, which was the tent of meeting until Solomon built the temple of God in Jerusalem. As they carried out their work, they followed the instructions given to them. These are the persons, together with their sons, who serve by preparing for and directing worship. From the family of the Kohathites was Heman the choirmaster, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tahath, the son of Assur, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Azar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Heman's associate Azaph stood at his right hand. Azaph was the son of Berechiah, the son of Shermeah, the son of Michael, the son of Basia, the son of Malkijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adaiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimi, the son of Jehoth, the son of Gershon, the son of Levi. Of the sons of Merari, the associates who stood at his left hand, was Ethan the son of Kishi, the son of Abdi, the son of Malak, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shemer, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. The rest of the Levites were assigned to all the other work in the place of worship, the house of God. Aaron and his sons offered the sacrifices on the altar of burnt offering and the altar of incense, they were in charge of all the work surrounding the Holy of Holies. 
They made atonement for Israel following the instructions commanded by Moses, servant of God. These are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son, Bucky his son, Uzi his son, Zerahiah his son, Moraith his son, Amariah his son, Ahitub his son, Zadok his son, and Ahamaz his son. And these are the places where the priestly families were assigned to live. The first assignment went by lot to the sons of Aaron of the Kohathite family, they were given Hebron in the land of Judah and all the neighboring pastures. Caleb the son of Jephunneh got the fields and villages around the city. The family of Aaron was also given the cities of refuge, with pastures included, Hebron, Libna, Jadar, Eshtemoa, Hylan, Debir, Ashen, and Beth Shemesh. They were also given Geba from the tribe of Benjamin, Elmeth, and Anathoth, all with pastures included. In all, thirteen cities were distributed among the Kohathite families. The rest of the Kohathites were given another ten cities, distributed by lot from the half-tribe of Manasseh. The sons of Gershon were given, family by family, thirteen cities from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and Manasseh in Bashan. The sons of Merari, family by family, were assigned by lot twelve cities from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. The sons of Israel gave the Levites both the cities and their pastures. They also distributed by lot cities from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. Some of the Kohath families were given their cities from the tribe of Ephraim, cities of refuge, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, Gezer, Jokmim, Beth Horon, Ijalan, and Gath Rimmon, all with their pastures. The rest of the sons of Kohath were given Aner and Bilim with their pastures from the half tribe of Manasseh. The sons of Gershon were given, family by family, from the half tribe of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan and Ashtaroth, from the tribe of Issachar, Kadesh, Dabarath, Ramath, and Anam, from the tribe of Asher, Mishal, Abdon, Hukok, and Rehob, from the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee, Haman, and Kiriathane. The rest of the sons of Merari got Rimmano and Tabor from the tribe of Zebulun, Bezer in the desert, Jaza, Kedemoth, and Mephath from the tribe of Reuben to the east of the Jordan, and Ramath in Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer from the tribe of Gad. Pastures were included in all these towns. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron, four sons. The sons of Tola were Uzi, Rephaiah, Jeriel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Samuel, the chiefs of their families. During David's reign, the Tola family counted 22,600 warriors in their lineage. The son of Uzi was Israhiah, the sons of Israhiah were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishia, five sons and all of them chiefs. They counted 36,000 warriors in their lineage because they had more wives and sons than their brothers. The extended families of Issachar accounted for 87,000 warriors, all of them listed in the family tree. Benjamin had three sons, Bela, Becker, and Gedeel. Bela had five, Esben, Uzi, Uziel, Jerimoth, and Iri, all of them chiefs and warriors. They counted 22,034 names in their family tree. Becker's sons were Zemira, Josh, Eliezer, Elioenai, Omri, Jerimoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Elmeth. Through these chiefs their family tree listed 20,200 warriors. Gedeel's son was Bilhan and the sons of Bilhan were Jush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kanana, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahishahar, all sons of Gedeel and family chiefs, they counted 17,200 combat-ready warriors. 
Shepim and Huppim were the sons of Iar, Hushim were from the family of Ahir. The sons of Naphtali were Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shalem, they are listed under the maternal line of Bilha, their grandfather's concubine. Manasseh's sons, born of his Aramean concubine, were Israel and Makir the father of Gilead. Makir got his wife from the Huppites and Shepites. His sister's name was Maka. Another son, Zelophehad, had only daughters. Makir's wife Maka bore a son whom she named Paresh, his brother's name was Sheresh and his sons were Ulam and Rakam. Ulam's son was Bidan. This accounts for the sons of Gilead son of Makir, the son of Manasseh. His sister Hamilketh gave birth to Ishdod, Abizer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Leki, and Anian. The sons of Ephraim were Shuthala, Bered his son, Tahoth his son, Elida his son, Tahoth his son, Zabad his son, Shuthala his son, and Ezer and Elid, cattle rustlers, killed on one of their raids by the natives of Gath. Their father Ephraim grieved a long time and his family gathered to give him comfort. Then he slept with his wife again. She conceived and produced a son. He named him Bariah, unlucky, because of the bad luck that had come to his family. His daughter was Shira. She built Lower and Upper Beth Horon and Uzan Shira. Repha was Ephraim's son and also Reshef, Tela was his son, Tain his son, Laden his son, Amahad his son, Elishama his son, Nun his son, and Joshua his son. They occupied Bethel and the neighboring country from Naran on the east to Gezer and its villages on the west, along with Shechem and its villages, and extending as far as Aya and its villages. Stretched along the borders of Manasseh were Beth Shan, Tanakh, Megiddo, and Dor, together with their satellite villages. The families descended from Joseph son of Israel lived in all these places. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah, Sarah was their sister. The sons of Bariah were Heber and Malkiel, who had Berzaith. Heber had Japhlet, Shomer, Hotham, and Shua their sister. Japhlet had Pesach, Bimhol, and Ushvath. His brother Shomer had Roga, Hubba, and Aram. His brother Helem had Zophah, Imna, Shalesh, and Amal. Zophah had Sua, Harnifer, Shul, Beri, Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira. Jether had Jephunneh, Pispa, and Era. Ola had Era, Haniel, and Rizia. These were Asher's sons, all of them responsible, excellent in character, and brave in battle, good leaders. They listed 26,000 combat-ready men in their family tree. Benjamin's firstborn son was Bela, followed by Ashbel, Ahara, Noah, and Rapha, five in all. Bela's sons were Adar, Gera, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephaphan, and Huram. These are the families of Ehud that lived in Geba and were exiled to Manahath, Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera, who led them to exile and had Uzzah and Ahahud. In the land of Moab, Shaharaim had children after he divorced his wives Hushim and Bara. From his new wife Hodesh he had Jobab, Zibia, Misha, Malcam, Juz, Sakia, and Merma sons who became heads of families. From his earlier wife Hushim he had Abitub and Elpul. Elpul's sons were Eber, Mizham, and Shemd, who built Ono and Lod with all their villages. Bariah and Shema were family chiefs who lived at Ijalan. They drove out the citizens of Gath. Their brothers were Shashak and Jerimoth. 
The sons of Bariah were Zebediah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishba, and Joha. The sons of Elpal were Zebediah, Meshullam, Hiski, Heber, Ishmarai, Isliah, and Jobab. The sons of Shimi were Jachim, Zikri, Zabdi, Elianai, Zilathai, Eliel, Adeya, Bariah, and Shimrath. The sons of Shashak were Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Anthathijah, Iphtia, and Penel. The sons of Jerahem were Shamshari, Shehariah, Athaliah, Jerashiah, Elijah, and Zikri. These were the chiefs of the families as listed in their family tree. They lived in Jerusalem. Jeel the father of Gibeon lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Maka. Abdon was his firstborn son, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, Zeker, and Mikloth. Mikloth had Shemiah. They lived in the neighborhood of their extended families in Jerusalem. Nahad Kish, Kish had Saul, and Saul had Jonathan, Malkishwa, Abinadab, and Eshbal. Jonathan had Meribbal, and Meribbal had Micah. Micah's sons were Pithon, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz had Jehoda and Jehoda had Elmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri had Moza and Moza had Binia. Rapha was his son, Elisa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons named Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. His brother Ashek's sons were Ulam his firstborn, followed by Jush and Eliphalet. Ulam's sons were warriors well known as archers. They had lots of sons and grandsons, at least 150. These were all in Benjamin's family tree. This is the complete family tree for all Israel, recorded in the royal annals of the kings of Israel and Judah at the time they were exiled to Babylon because of their unbelieving and disobedient lives. The first Israelites to return from exile to their homes and cities were the priests, the Levites, and the temple support staff. Returning to Jerusalem from the families of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh were the following, Uthai son of Amahad, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, from the line of Perez son of Judah, from the Shilonites were Asiah the firstborn and his sons, from the family of Zerah there was Jul. There were 690 in the Judah group. From the family of Benjamin were Salu son of Meshullam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua, and Ibniah son of Jeraham, and Elah son of Uzi, the son of Micri, and Meshullam son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Abnijah. There were 956 in the Benjamin group. All these named were heads of families. From the company of priests there were Jediah, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshullam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meraeth, the son of Ahitub, who was in charge of taking care of the house of God, Adeya son of Jeraham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malkijah, also Masai son of Adiel, the son of Jazra, the son of Meshullam, the son of Meshillamith, the son of Emmer. The priests, all of them heads of families, numbered 1,760, skilled and seasoned servants in the work of worshipping God. From the Levites were Shemaiah son of Hashub, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, a Merorite, then Bakbakar, Haresh, Galil, Matania son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Azaph, also Obadiah son of Shemaiah, the son of Galil, the son of Jeduthun, and finally Barakiah son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. The security guards were Shalom, Akub, Talman, 
Ahiman, and their brothers. Shalom was the chief and up to now the security guard at the king's gate on the east. They also served as security guards at the camps of Levite families. Shalom son of Kore, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, along with his brothers in the Korahite family, were in charge of the services of worship as doorkeepers of the tent, as their ancestors had guarded the entrance to the camp of God. In the early days, Phinehas son of Eleazar was in charge of the security guards, God be with him. Now Zechariah son of Meshalemia was the security guard at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The number of those who had been chosen to be security guards was 212, they were officially registered in their own camps. David and Samuel the seer handpicked them for their dependability. They and their sons had the permanent responsibility for guarding the gates of God's house, the house of worship, the main security guards were posted at the four entrances, east, west, north, and south, their brothers in the villages were scheduled to give them relief weekly, the four main security guards were responsible for round-the-clock surveillance. Being Levites, they were responsible for the security of all supplies and valuables in the house of God. They kept watch all through the night and had the key to open the doors each morning. Some were in charge of the articles used in the temple worship, they counted them both when they brought them in and when they took them out. Others were in charge of supplies in the sanctuary, flour, wine, oil, incense, and spices. And some of the priests were assigned to mixing the oils for the perfume. The Levite Mattathiah, the firstborn son of Shalom the Korahite, was responsible for baking the bread for the services of worship. Some of the brothers, sons of the Kohathites, were assigned to preparing the bread set out on the table each Sabbath. And then there were the musicians, all heads of Levite families. They had permanent living quarters in the temple, because they were on 24-hour duty, they were exempt from all other duties. These were the heads of Levite families as designated in their family tree. They lived in Jerusalem. Jeel the father of Gibeon lived at Gibeon, his wife was Maka. His firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Na, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth had Shimeen. They lived in the same neighborhood as their relatives in Jerusalem. Nahad Kish, Kish had Saul, Saul had Jonathan, Malkishwa, Abinadab, and Eshbal. Meribal was the son of Jonathan and Meribal had Micah. Micah's sons were Pithon, Melech, and Tariah. Ahaz had Jerah, Jerah had Ailmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri, Zimri had Moza, Moza had Binia, Rephaiah was his son, Elisa was his son, and Azel was his son. Azel had six sons, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan, the sons of Azel. The Philistines went to war against Israel, the Israelites ran for their lives from the Philistines but fell, slaughtered on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines zeroed in on Saul and his sons and killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishwa. The battle went hard against Saul, the archers found him and wounded him. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and finish me off before these pagan pigs get to me and make a sport of my body. But his armor-bearer, restrained by both reverence and fear, wouldn't do it. So Saul took his own sword and killed himself. The armor-bearer, panicked because Saul was dead, then killed himself. So Saul and his three sons, all for the same day, died. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and ran off, the Philistines came and moved in.
The next day the Philistines came to plunder the dead bodies and found Saul and his sons dead on Mount Gilboa. They stripped Saul, removed his head and his armor, and put them on exhibit throughout Philistia, reporting the victory news to their idols and the people. Then they put Saul's armor on display in the temple of their gods and placed his skull as a trophy in the temple of their god Dagon. The people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul. All of their fighting men went into action, retrieved the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh, gave them a dignified burial under the oak at Jabesh, and mourned their deaths for seven days. Saul died in disobedience, disobedient to God. He didn't obey God's words. Instead of praying, he went to a witch to seek guidance. Because he didn't go to God for help, God took his life and turned the kingdom over to David son of Jesse. Then all Israel assembled before David at Hebron. Look at us, they said. We're your very flesh and blood. In the past, yes, even while Saul was king, you were the real leader of Israel. God told you, you will shepherd my people Israel, you are to be the ruler of my people Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, David made a covenant with them in the presence of God at Hebron. Then they anointed David king over Israel exactly as God had commanded through Samuel. David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, it was the old Jebus, where the Jebusites lived. The citizens of Jebus told David, No trespassing, you can't come here. David came on anyway and captured the fortress of Zion, the city of David. David had said, The first person to kill a Jebusite will be commander-in-chief. Joab son of Zeruiah was the first, and he became the chief. David took up residence in the fortress city, that's how it got its name, City of David. David fortified the city all the way around, both the outer bulwarks, the millow, and the outside wall. Joab rebuilt the city gates. David's stride became longer, his embrace larger, yes, God of the angel armies was with him. These are the chiefs of David's mighty men, the ones who linked arms with him as he took up his kingship, with all Israel joining in, helping him become king in just the way God had spoken regarding Israel. The list of David's mighty men, Jashabim son of Hakmoni was chief of the thirty. Single-handedly he killed three hundred men, killed them all in one skirmish. Next was Eliezer son of Dodai the Ahohite, one of the big three of the mighty men. He was with David at Pa Damon, where the Philistines had mustered their troops for battle. It was an area where there was a field of barley. The army started to flee from the Philistines and then took its stand right in that field, and turned the tide. They slaughtered the Philistines, God helping them, a huge victory. The big three from the thirty made a rocky descent to David at the cave of Adullam while a company of Philistines was camped in the valley of Rephaim. David was holed up in the cave while the Philistines were prepared for battle at Bethlehem. David had a sudden craving, what I wouldn't give for a drink of water from the well in Bethlehem, the one at the gate. The three penetrated the Philistine camp, drew water from the well at the Bethlehem gate, shouldered it, and brought it to David. And then David wouldn't drink it. He poured it out as a sacred offering to God, saying, I'd rather be damned by God than drink this. It would be like drinking the lifeblood of these men, they risked their lives to bring it. So he refused to drink it. These are the kinds of things that the big three of the mighty men did. Abishai brother of Joab was the chief of the thirty. Single-handedly he fought three hundred men, and killed the lot, but he never made it into the circle of the three. He was highly honored by the thirty, he was their chief, still, 
he didn't measure up to the three. Benaiah son of Jehoiada was a mighty man from Kabzeel with many exploits to his credit, he killed two famous Moabites, he climbed down into a pit and killed a lion on a snowy day, and he killed an Egyptian, a giant seven and a half feet tall. The Egyptian had a spear like a ship's boom but Benaiah went at him with a mere club, tore the spear from the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with it. These are some of the things Benaiah son of Jehoiada did. But he was never included with the three. He was highly honored among the thirty, but didn't measure up to the three. David put him in charge of his personal bodyguard. The mighty men of the military were Asahel brother of Joab, Elhanan son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shammoth the Hararite, Helez the Pelonite, Ira son of Ikesh the Tekoite, Abizer the Anathathite, Sibachai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite, Helaid son of Bana the Netophathite, Ithai son of Ribai from Gibeah of the Benjaminite, Benaiah the Parathonite, Hurai from the ravines of Gash, Abel the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Baharamite, Eliabah the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem. The Jizanite, Jonathan son of Shaji the Hararite, Ahiam son of Sacher the Haranite, Eliphal son of Uar, Hefer the Mechorathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, Hezro the Carmelite, Narai son of Ezbai, Joel brother of Nathan, Mibhar son of Hagri, Zelik the Ammonite, Naharai the Barathite, the armor bearer of Joab son of Zeruiah, Ira the Athrite, Garib the Athrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad son of Aleh, Adina son of Sheza the Reubenite, the Reubenite chief of the thirty, Hanan son of Maka, Joshaphat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashtarathite, Shama and Jeel the sons of Hotham the Aroerite, Jediel son of Shimri, Joha the Tezite his brother, Eliel the Mahavite, Jeribai and Joshaviah the sons of Elmam, Ithma the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jezel the Mezabate. These are the men who joined David in Ziklag, it was during the time he was banished by Saul the son of Kish, they were among the mighty men, good fighters. They were armed with bows and could sling stones and shoot arrows either right or left-handed. They hailed from Saul's tribe, Benjamin. The first was Ahizer, then Josh son of Shema the Jibeathite, Jeziel and Pelet the sons of Asmaveth, Baraka, Jehu the Anathathite, Ishmaeah the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Bealiah, Shemariah, Shephatiah the Herophite, Elkanah, Ishia, Azrael, Joser, Jashabim, the Korahites and Joela and Zebediah, the sons of Jerahem from Geder. There were some Gedites there who had defected to David at his wilderness fortress, they were seasoned and eager fighters who knew how to handle shield and spear. They were wild in appearance, like lions, but as agile as gazelles racing across the hills. Ezer was the first, then Obadiah, Eliab, Mishmana, Jeremiah, Atai, Eliel, Johanan, Elzabad, Jeremiah, and Macbani, eleven of them. These Gadites were the cream of the crop, any one of them was worth a hundred lesser men, and the best of them were worth a thousand. They were the ones who crossed the Jordan when it was at flood stage in the first month, and put everyone in the lowlands to flight, both east and west. There were also men from the tribes of Benjamin and Judah who joined David in his wilderness fortress. When David went out to meet them, this is what he said, If you have come in peace and to help me, you are most welcome to join this company, but if you have come to betray me to my enemies, innocent as I am, the God of our ancestors will see through you and bring judgment on you. Just then Amasai chief of the thirty, moved by God's spirit, said, We're on your side, O David. We're committed, O son of Jesse. 
All is well, yes, all is well with you. And all's well with whoever helps you. Yes, for your God has helped and does help you. So David took them on and assigned them a place under the chiefs of the raiders. Some from the tribe of Manasseh also defected to David when he started out with the Philistines to go to war against Saul. In the end, they didn't actually fight because the Philistine leaders, after talking it over, sent them home, saying, We can't trust them with our lives, they'll betray us to their master Saul. The men from Manasseh who defected to David at Ziklag were Adna, Josabad, Gedeel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai, all leaders among the families of Manasseh. They helped David in his raids against the desert bandits, they were all stalwart fighters and good leaders among his raiders. Hardly a day went by without men showing up to help, it wasn't long before his band seemed as large as God's own army. Here are the statistics on the battle-seasoned warriors who came down from the north to David at Hebron to hand over Saul's kingdom, in accord with God's word, from Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 battle-ready, from Simeon, 7,100 stalwart fighters, from Levi, 4,600, which included Jehoiada leader of the family of Aaron bringing 3,700 men and the young and stalwart Zadok with 22 leaders from his family, from Benjamin, Saul's family, 3,000, most of whom had stuck it out with Saul. Until now, from Ephraim, 20,800, fierce fighters and famous in their hometowns, from the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 elected to come and make David king, from Issachar, men who understood both the times and Israel's duties, 200 leaders with their families, from Zebulun, 50,000 well-equipped veteran warriors, unswervingly loyal, from Naphtali, 1,000 chiefs leading 37,000 men heavily armed, from Dan, 28,600 battle-ready men, from Asher, 40,000 veterans, battle-ready, and from east of Jordan, Men from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, heavily armed, 120,000. All these soldiers came to David at Hebron, ready to fight if necessary, they were both united and determined to make David king over all Israel. And everyone else in Israel was of the same mind, make David king. They were with David for three days of feasting celebration, with food and drink supplied by their families. Neighbors ranging from as far north as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali arrived with donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen loaded down with food for the party, flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, oil, cattle, and sheep, joy in Israel. David consulted with all of his leaders, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds. Then David addressed the entire assembly of Israel, If it seems right to you, and it is God's will, let's invite all our relatives wherever they are throughout Israel, along with their relatives, including their priests and Levites from their cities and surrounding pastures, to join us. And let's bring the chest of our God back the chest that was out of sight, out of mind during the days of Saul. The entire assembly of Israel agreed, everybody agreed that it was the right thing to do. So David gathered all Israel together, from Egypt's pond of Horus in the southwest to the pass of Hamath in the northeast, to go and get the chest of God from kiriath Jerim. Then David and all Israel went to Bala, kiriath Jerim in Judah to bring back the chest of God, the cherubim throne of God, where God's name is invoked. They moved the chest of God on a brand new cart from the house of Abinadab with Uzzah and Ahio in charge. In procession with the chest of God, David and all Israel worshipped exuberantly in song and dance, with a marching band of all kinds of instruments. When they were at the threshing floor of Kaidan, 
the oxen stumbled and Uzzah grabbed the chest to keep it from falling off. God erupted in anger against Uzzah and killed him because he grabbed the chest. He died on the spot, in the presence of God. David lost his temper, angry because God exploded against Uzzah, the place is still called Perez Uzzah, exploded Uzzah. David was terrified of God that day, he said, how can I possibly continue this parade with the chest of God? So David called off the parade of the chest to the city of David, instead he stored it in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The chest of God was in storage in the house of Obed-Edom for three months. God blessed the family of Obed-Edom and everything around him. King Hiram of Tyre sent an envoy to David, along with cedar lumber, masons, and carpenters to build him a royal palace. Then David knew for sure that God had confirmed him as king over Israel, because of the rising reputation that God was giving his kingdom for the benefit of his people Israel. David married more wives and had more children in Jerusalem. His children born in Jerusalem were Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elplet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Biliada, and Eliphlet. The minute the Philistines heard that David had been made king over a united Israel, they went out in force to capture David. When David got the report, he marched out to confront them. On their way, the Philistines stopped off to plunder the valley of Rephaim. David prayed to God, Is this the right time to attack the Philistines? Will you give me the victory? God answered, Attack, I'll give you the victory. David attacked at Baal Perazim and slaughtered them. David said, God exploded my enemies, as water explodes from a burst pipe. That's how the place got its name, Baal Perazim, Baal Explosion. The Philistines left their gods behind and David ordered that they be burned up. And then the Philistines were back at it again, plundering in the valley. David again prayed to God. God answered, this time don't attack head on circle around and come at them out of the balsam grove. When you hear a sound like shuffling feet in the tops of the balsams, attack, God will be two steps ahead of you, slaughtering the Philistines. David did exactly as God commanded, slaughtering Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. David was soon famous all over the place, far and near, and God put the fear of God into the godless nations. After David built houses for himself in the city of David, he cleared a place for the chest and pitched a tent for it. Then David gave orders, no one carries the chest of God except the Levites, God designated them and them only to carry the chest of God and be available full time for service in the work of worship. David then called everyone in Israel to assemble in Jerusalem to bring up the chest of God to its specially prepared place. David also called in the family of Aaron and the Levites. From the family of Kohath, Uriel the head with 120 relatives, from the family of Merari, Asiah the head with 220 relatives, from the family of Gershon, Joel the head with 130 relatives, from the family of Eliza Fan, Shemaiah the head with 200 relatives, from the family of Hebron, Eliel the head with 80 relatives, from the family of Uziel, Ammonadab the head with 112 relatives. Then David called in Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Ammonadab the Levites. He said, You are responsible for the Levitical families, now consecrate yourselves, both you and your relatives, and bring up the chest of the God of Israel to the place I have set aside for it. The first time we did this, you Levites did not carry it properly, and God exploded in anger at us because we didn't make proper preparation and follow instructions. 
So the priests and Levites consecrated themselves to bring up the chest of the God of Israel. The Levites carried the chest of God exactly as Moses, instructed by God, commanded, carried it with poles on their shoulders, careful not to touch it with their hands. David ordered the heads of the Levites to assign their relatives to sing in the choir, accompanied by a well-equipped marching band, and fill the air with joyful sound. The Levites assigned Heman son of Joel, and from his family, Azaph son of Berechiah, then Ethan son of Keshiah from the family of Merari, and after them in the second rank their brothers Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Buni, Eliab, Benaiah, Messiah, Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekniah, Obadidim, and Jeel as security guards. The members of the choir and marching band were, Heman, Azaph, and Ethan with bronze symbols, Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Messiah, and Benaiah with lyres carrying the melody, Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekniah, Obadidim, Jeel, and Azaziah with harps filling in the harmony, Kenaniah, the Levite in charge of music, a very gifted musician, was music director. Berechiah and Elkanah were porters for the chest. The priests Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer blew the trumpets before the chest of God. Obadidim and Jehiah were also porters for the chest. Now they were ready. David, the elders of Israel, and the commanders of thousands started out to get the chest of the covenant of God and bring it up from the house of Obed-Edom. And they went rejoicing. Because God helped the Levites, strengthening them as they carried the chest of the covenant of God, they paused to worship by sacrificing seven bulls and seven rams. They were all dressed in elegant linen, David, the Levites carrying the chest, the choir and band, and Kenaniah who was directing the music. David also wore a linen prayer shawl, called an ephod. On they came, all Israel on parade bringing up the chest of the covenant of God, shouting and cheering, playing every kind of brass and percussion and string instrument. When the chest of the covenant of God entered the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, was watching from a window. When she saw King David dancing ecstatically she was filled with contempt. They brought the chest of God and placed it right in the center of the tent that David had pitched for it, then they worshipped by presenting burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When David had completed the offerings of worship, he blessed the people in the name of God. Then he passed around to everyone there, men and women alike, a loaf of bread, a slice of barbecue, and a raisin cake. Then David assigned some of the Levites to the chest of God to lead worship, to intercede, give thanks, and praise the God of Israel. Asaph was in charge, under him were Zechariah, Jeel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obadidim, and Jeel, who played the musical instruments. Azaph was on percussion. The priests Benaiah and Jehaziel blew the trumpets before the chest of the covenant of God at set times through the day. That was the day that David inaugurated regular worship of praise to God, led by Azaph and his company. Thank God. Call out his name. Tell the whole world who he is and what he's done. Sing to him. Play songs for him. Broadcast all his wonders. Revel in his holy name. God seekers, be jubilant. Study God and his strength. Seek his presence day and night. Remember all the wonders he performed. The miracles and judgments that came out of his mouth. Seed of Israel his servant. Children of Jacob, his first choice. He is God, our God. 
Wherever you go you come on his judgments and decisions. He keeps his commitments across thousands. Of generations, the covenant he commanded. The same one he made with Abraham. The very one he swore to Isaac. He posted it in big block letters to Jacob. This eternal covenant with Israel. I give you the land of Canaan. This is your inheritance. Even though you're not much to look at. A few straggling strangers. They wandered from country to country. Camped out in one kingdom after another. But he didn't let anyone push them around. He stood up for them against bully kings. Don't you dare touch my anointed ones. Don't lay a hand on my prophets. Sing to God, everyone and everything. Get out his salvation news every day. Publish his glory among the godless nations. His wonders to all races and religions. And why? Because God is great, well worth praising. No god or goddess comes close in honor. All the popular gods are stuff and nonsense. But God made the cosmos. Splendor and majesty flow out of him. Strength and joy fill his place. Shout bravo. To God, families of the peoples. In awe of the glory, in awe of the strength, bravo. Shout bravo. To his famous name. Lift high an offering and enter his presence. Stand resplendent in his robes of holiness. God is serious business, take him seriously. He's put the earth in place and it's not moving. So let heaven rejoice, let earth be jubilant. And pass the word among the nations, God reigns. Let ocean, all teeming with life, bellow. Let field and all its creatures shake the rafters. Then the trees in the forest will add their applause. To all who are pleased and present before God. He's on his way to set things right. Give thanks to God, he is good. And his love never quits. Say, save us, Savior God. Round us up and get us out of these godless places. So we can give thanks to your holy name. And bask in your life of praise. Blessed be God, the God of Israel. From everlasting to everlasting, then everybody said, yes. Amen, and praise God. David left Asaph and his co-workers with the chest of the covenant of God and in charge of the work of worship, they were responsible for the needs of worship around the clock. He also assigned Obed-Edom and his sixty-eight relatives to help them. Obed-Edom son of Juduthan and Hosea were in charge of the security guards. The priest Zadok and his family of priests were assigned to the tent of God at the sacred mound at Gibeon to make sure that the services of morning and evening worship were conducted daily, complete with whole burnt offerings offered on the altar of burnt offering, as ordered in the law of God which was the norm for Israel. With them were Heman, Jeduthun, and others specifically named, with the job description, Give thanks to God, for his love never quits. Heman and Jeduthun were also well equipped with trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments for accompanying sacred songs. The sons of Jeduthun formed the security guard. Arrangements completed, the people all left for home. And David went home to bless his family. After the king had made himself at home, he said to Nathan the prophet, Look at this, here I am comfortable in a luxurious palace of cedar and the chest of the covenant of God sits under a tent. Nathan told David, Whatever is on your heart, go and do it, God is with you. But that night, the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, 
This is God's word on the matter, you will not build me a house to live in. Why, I haven't lived in a house from the time I brought up the children of Israel from Egypt till now, I've gone from one tent and makeshift shelter to another. In all my travels with all Israel, did I ever say to any of the leaders I commanded to shepherd Israel, why haven't you built me a house of cedar? So here is what you are to tell my servant David, the God of the angel armies has this word for you, I took you from the pasture, tagging after sheep, and made you prince over my people Israel. I was with you everywhere you went and mowed your enemies down before you, and now I am about to make you famous, ranked with the great names on earth. I'm going to set aside a place for my people Israel and plant them there so they'll have their own home and not be knocked around anymore, nor will evil nations afflict them as they always have, even during the days I set judges over my people Israel. And finally, I'm going to conquer all your enemies. And now I'm telling you this, God himself will build you a house. When your life is complete and you're buried with your ancestors, then I'll raise up your child to succeed you, a child from your own body, and I'll firmly establish his rule. He will build a house to honor me, and I will guarantee his kingdom's rule forever. I'll be a father to him, and he'll be a son to me. I will never remove my gracious love from him as I did from the one who preceded you. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever, his throne will always be there, rock solid. Nathan gave David a complete and accurate report of everything he heard and saw in the vision. King David went in, took his place before God, and prayed, Who am I, my master God, and what is my family? that you have brought me to this place in life. But that's nothing compared to what's coming, for you've also spoken of my family far into the future, given me a glimpse into tomorrow and looked on me, Master God, as a somebody. What's left for David to say to this, to your honoring your servant, even though you know me, just as I am? O oh God, out of the goodness of your heart, You've taken your servant to do this great thing and put your great work on display. There's none like you, God, no God but you, nothing to compare with what we've heard with our own ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, a nation unique on earth, whom God set out to redeem as his own people, and became most famous for it, performing great and fearsome acts, throwing out nations and their gods left and right as you saved your people from Egypt. You established for yourself a people, your very own Israel, your people forever. And you, God, became their G-O-D that is so now, great God, this word that you have spoken to me and my family, guarantee it forever. Do exactly what you've promised. Then your reputation will be confirmed and flourish always as people exclaim, The God of the angel armies, the God over Israel, is Israel's God. And the house of your servant David will remain rock solid under your watchful presence. You, my God, have told me plainly, I will build you a house. That's how I was able to find the courage to pray this prayer to you. God, being the God you are, you have spoken all these wonderful words to me. As if that weren't enough, you've blessed my family so that it will continue in your presence always. Because you have blessed it, God, it's really blessed, blessed for good. In the days that followed, David struck hard at the Philistines, bringing them to their knees, captured Gath, and took control of the surrounding countryside. He also fought and defeated Moab. The Moabites came under David's rule and paid regular tribute. On his way to restore his sovereignty at the Euphrates River, David defeated Hadadezer king of Zobah, over toward Hamath. David captured a thousand chariots, seven thousand cavalry, and twenty thousand infantry from him. He hamstrung all the chariot horses, but saved back a hundred. 
When the Arameans from Damascus came to the aid of Hadadezer king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of them. David set up a puppet government in Aram Damascus. The Arameans became subjects of David and were forced to bring tribute. God gave victory to David wherever he marched. David plundered the gold shields that belonged to the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. He also looted Teba and Cun, cities of Hadadezer, of a huge quantity of bronze that Solomon later used to make the great bronze sea, the pillars, and bronze equipment in the temple. Two king of Hamath heard that David had struck down the entire army of Hadadezer king of Zobah. He sent his son Hadaram to King David to greet and congratulate him for fighting and defeating Hadadezer. Two and Hadadezer were old enemies. Hadaram brought David various things made of silver, gold, and bronze. King David consecrated these things along with the silver and gold that he had plundered from other nations, Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Amalek. Abishai son of Zeruiah fought and defeated the Edomites in the Valley of Salt, 18,000 of them. He set up a puppet government in Edom and the Edomites became subjects under David, God gave David victory wherever he marched. Thus David ruled over all of Israel. He ruled well, fair and even-handed in all his duties and relationships, Joab son of Zeruiah was head of the army, Jehoshaphat son of Ahalot was in charge of public records, Zadok son of Ahitub and Abimelech son of Abiathar were priests, Shavsha was secretary, Benaiah son of Jehoiada was over the special forces, the Carathites and Pelathites, and David's sons held high positions, close to the king. Some time after this Naash king of the Ammonites died and his son succeeded him as king. David said, I'd like to show some kindness to Hanan son of Naash, treat him as well and as kindly as his father treated me. So David sent condolences about his father's death. But when David's servants arrived in Ammonite country and came to Hanan to bring condolences, the Ammonite leaders warned Hanan, Do you for a minute suppose that David is honoring your father by sending you comforters? Don't you know that he sent these men to scout out the city and size it up so that he can capture it? So Hanan seized David's men, shaved them clean, cut off their robes halfway up their buttocks, and sent them packing. When this was all reported to David, he sent someone to meet them, for they were seriously humiliated. The king told them, stay in Jericho until your beards grow out, only then come back. When it dawned on the Ammonites that as far as David was concerned, they stank to high heaven, they hired, at a cost of a thousand talents of silver, thirty-seven and a half tons, chariots and horsemen from the Arameans of Naharaim, Maka, and Zobah, thirty-two thousand chariots and drivers, plus the king of Maka with his troops who came and set up camp at Mediba, the Ammonites, too, were mobilized from their cities and got ready for battle. When David heard this, he dispatched Joab with his strongest fighters in full force. The Ammonites marched out and spread out in battle formation at the city gate, the kings who had come as allies took up a position in the open fields. When Joab saw that he had two fronts to fight, before and behind, he took his pick of the best of Israel and deployed them to confront the Arameans. The rest of the army he put under the command of Abishai, his brother, and deployed them to deal with the Ammonites. Then he said, If the Arameans are too much for me, you help me, and if the Ammonites prove too much for you, I'll come and help you. Courage! We'll fight might and main for our people and for the cities of our God. And God will do whatever he sees needs doing. But when Joab and his soldiers moved in to fight the Arameans, they ran off in full retreat. Then the Ammonites, 
seeing the Arameans run for dear life, took to their heels and ran from Abishai into the city. So Joab withdrew from the Ammonites and returned to Jerusalem. When the Arameans saw how badly they'd been beaten by Israel, they picked up the pieces and regrouped. They sent for the Arameans who were across the river, Shaphak, commander of Hadadezer's army, led them. When all this was reported to David, he mustered all Israel, crossed the Jordan, advanced, and prepared to fight. The Arameans went into battle formation, ready for David, and the fight was on. But the Arameans again scattered before Israel. David killed 7,000 chariot drivers and 40,000 infantry. He also killed Shaphak, the army commander. When all the kings who were vassals of Hadadezer saw that they had been routed by Israel, they made peace with David and served him. The Arameans were afraid to help the Ammonites ever again. That spring, the time when kings usually go off to war, Joab led the army out and ravaged the Ammonites. He then set siege to Rabbah. David meanwhile was back in Jerusalem. Joab hit Rabbah hard and left it in ruins. David took the crown off the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold and set with a precious stone. It was placed on David's head. He hauled great quantities of loot from the city and put the people to hard labor with saws and picks and axes. This is what he did to all the Ammonites. Then David and his army returned to Jerusalem. Later war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. That was the time Sibachai the Hushathite killed Sippai of the clan of giants. The Philistines had to eat crow. In another war with the Philistines, Elhanan son of Jair killed Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite whose spear was like a ship's boom. And then there was the war at Gath that featured a hulking giant who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six on each hand and foot, yet another from the clan of giants. When he mocked Israel, Jonathan son of Shermeah, David's brother, killed him. These came from the clan of giants and were killed by David and his men. Now Satan entered the scene and seduced David into taking a census of Israel. David gave orders to Joab and the army officers under him, canvas all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and get a count of the population. I want to know the number. Joab resisted, may God multiply his people by hundreds. Don't they all belong to my master the king? But why on earth would you do a thing like this? Why risk getting Israel into trouble with God? But David wouldn't take no for an answer, so Joab went off and did it, canvassed the country and then came back to Jerusalem and reported the results of the census, there were 1,100,000 fighting men, of that total, Judah accounted for 470,000. Joab, disgusted by the command, it, in fact, turned his stomach, protested by leaving Levi and Benjamin out of the census taking. And God, offended by the whole thing, punished Israel. Then David prayed, I have sinned badly in what I have just done, substituting statistics for trust, forgive my sin, I've been really stupid. God answered by speaking to Gad, David's pastor, go and give David this message, God's word, you have your choice of three punishments, choose one and I'll do the rest. Gad delivered the message to David, do you want three years of famine, three months of running from your enemies while they chase you down, or three days of the sword of God, an epidemic unleashed on the country by an angel of God? Think it over and make up your mind. What shall I tell the one who sent me? David told Gad, they're all terrible. But I'd rather be punished by God whose mercy is great, than fall into human hands. So God unleashed an epidemic in Israel, 
70,000 Israelites died. God then sent the angel to Jerusalem but when he saw the destruction about to begin, he compassionately changed his mind and ordered the death angel, enough's enough. Pull back. The angel of God had just reached the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel hovering between earth and sky, sword drawn and about to strike Jerusalem. David and the elders bowed in prayer and covered themselves with rough burlap. David prayed, Please. I'm the one who sinned, I'm the one at fault. But these sheep, what did they do wrong? Punish me, not them, me and my family, don't take it out on them. The angel of God ordered Gad to tell David to go and build an altar to God on the threshing floor of Arauna the Jebusite. David did what Gad told him in obedience to God's command. Meanwhile Arauna had quit threshing the wheat and was watching the angel, his four sons took cover and hid. David came up to Arauna. When Arauna saw David, he left the threshing floor and bowed deeply before David, honoring the king. David said to Arauna, Give me the site of the threshing floor so I can build an altar to God. Charge me the market price, we're going to put an end to this disaster. O oh master, my king, said Arauna, just take it, do whatever you want with it. Look, Here's an ox for the burnt offering and threshing paddles for the fuel and wheat for the meal offering, it's all yours. David replied to Arauna, No. I'm buying it from you, and at the full market price. I'm not going to offer God sacrifices that are no sacrifice. So David bought the place from Arauna for 600 shekels of gold. He built an altar to God there and sacrificed whole burnt offerings and peace offerings. He called out to God and God answered by striking the altar of whole burnt offering with lightning. Then God told the angel to put his sword back into its scabbard. And that's the story of what happened when David saw that God answered him on the threshing floor of Arauna the Jebusite at the time he offered the sacrifice. At this time the tabernacle that Moses had constructed in the desert, and with it the altar of burnt offering, were set up at the worship center at Gibeon. But David, terrified by the angel's sword, wouldn't go there to pray to God anymore. So David declared, from now on, this is the site for the worship of God, this is the place for Israel's altar of burnt offering. David ordered all the resident aliens in the land to come together, he sent them to the stone quarries to cut dressed stone to build the temple of God. He also stockpiled a huge quantity of iron for nails and bracings for the doors of the gates, more bronze than could be weighed, and cedar logs past counting, the Sidonians and Tyrians shipped in huge loads of cedar logs for David. David was thinking, my son Solomon is too young to plan ahead for this. But the sanctuary that is to be built for God has to be the greatest, the talk of all the nations, so I'll get the construction materials together. That's why David prepared this huge stockpile of building materials before he died. Then he called in Solomon his son and commanded him to build a sanctuary for the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, I wanted in the worst way to build a sanctuary to honor my God. But God prevented me, saying, You've killed too many people, fought too many wars. You are not the one to honor me by building a sanctuary, you've been responsible for too much killing, too much bloodshed. But you are going to have a son and he will be a quiet and peaceful man, and I will calm his enemies down on all sides. His very name will speak peace, that is, Solomon, which means peace, and I'll give peace and rest under his rule. He will be the one to build a sanctuary in my honor. He'll be my royal adopted son and I'll be his father, 
and I'll make sure that the authority of his kingdom over Israel lasts forever. So now, son, God be with you. Godspeed as you build the sanctuary for your God, the job God has given you. And may God also give you discernment and understanding when he puts you in charge of Israel so that you will rule in reverent obedience under God's revelation. That's what will make you successful, following the directions and doing the things that God commanded Moses for Israel. Courage. Take charge. Don't be timid, don't hold back. Look at this, I've gone to a lot of trouble to stockpile materials for the sanctuary of God, a hundred thousand talents, three thousand seven hundred and seventy-five tons, of gold, a million talents, thirty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty tons, of silver, tons of bronze and iron, too much to weigh, and all this timber and stone. And you're free to add more. And workers both plentiful and prepared, stonecutters, masons, carpenters, artisans in gold and silver, bronze and iron. You're all set, get to work. And Godspeed. David gave orders to all of Israel's leaders to help his son Solomon, saying, Isn't it obvious that your God is present with you? that he has given you peaceful relations with everyone around? My part in this was to put down the enemies, subdue the land to God and his people, your part is to give yourselves, heart and soul, to praying to your God. So get moving, build the sacred house of worship to God. Then bring the chest of the covenant of God and all the holy furnishings for the worship of God into the sanctuary built in honor of God. When David got to be an old man, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. At the same time he brought together all the leaders of Israel, the priests, and the Levites. The Levites thirty years and older were counted, the total was thirty-eight thousand. David sorted them into work groups, twenty-four thousand are in charge of administering worship in the sanctuary, six thousand are officials and judges, 4,000 are security guards, and 4,000 are to serve in the orchestra, praising God with instruments that I have provided for praise. David then divided the Levites into groupings named after the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The Jershonites, Laden and Shimi. The three sons of Laden, Jehiel, Zetham, and Joel. The three sons of Shimi, Shelomoth, Haziel, and Haran, all heads of the families of Laden. The four sons of Shimi, Jehoth, Ziza, Jush, and Bariah. Jehoth came first, followed by Ziza. Jush and Bariah did not have many sons so they were counted as one family with one task. The four sons of Kohath, Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses. Aaron was especially ordained to work in the Holy of Holies, to burn incense before God, to serve God and bless his name always. This was a permanent appointment for Aaron and his sons. Moses and his sons were counted in the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. Shubael was the first son of Gershom. Rehabiah was the first and only son of Eliezer, but though Eliezer had no other sons, Rehabiah had many sons. Shelomith was the first son of Izar. Hebron had four sons, Jeriah, Amariah, Jehaziel, and Jechamim. Uzziel had two sons, Micah and Ishia. The sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi. The sons of Mali, Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer died without any sons, only daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married the daughters. Mushi had three sons, Mali, Eder, and Jerimoth. These are the sons of Levi twenty years and older, 
divided up according to families and heads of families and listed in the work groups that took care of the worship in the sanctuary of God. David said, Now that the God of Israel has given rest to his people and made Jerusalem his permanent home, the Levites no longer have to carry the tabernacle and all the furniture required for the work of worship. These last words of David referred only to Levites twenty years old and above. From now on the assigned work of the Levites was to assist Aaron's sons in the work of worship in God's house, maintain courtyards and closets, keep the furniture and utensils of worship clean, take care of any extra work needed in the work of worship, and provide bread for the table and flour for the meal offerings and the unraised wafers, all baking and mixing, all measuring and weighing. Also they were to be present for morning prayers, thanking and praising God, for evening prayers, and at the service of whole burnt offerings to God on Sabbath, at new moons, and at all festivals. They were on regular duty to serve God according to their assignment and the required number. In short, the Levites, with the sons of Aaron as their companions in the ministry of holy worship, were responsible for everything that had to do with worship, the place and times and ordering of worship. The family of Aaron was grouped as follows, Aaron's sons were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Nadab and Abihu died before their father and left no sons. So Eliezer and Ithamar filled the office of priest. David assigned Zadok from the family of Eliezer and Ahimelech from the family of Ithamar and assigned them to separate divisions for carrying out their appointed ministries. It turned out that there were more leaders in Eliezer's family than in Ithamar's and so they divided them proportionately. 16 clan leaders from Eliezer's family and 8 clan leaders from Ithamar's family. They assigned the leaders by lot, treating both families alike, for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among both the Eliezer and Ithamar families. The secretary Shemaiah son of Nethanel, a Levite, wrote down their names in the presence of the king, the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech son of Abiathar, and the leaders of the priestly in Levitical families. They took turns, one family was selected from Eliezer and then one from Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Haram, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malkijah, the sixth to Majamin, the seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jachim, the thirteenth to Huppa, the fourteenth to Jeshabib, the fifteenth to Bilgah, the sixteenth to Immer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Hapitzes the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jachin, the twenty-second to Gamal, the twenty-third to Deliah, and the twenty-fourth to Maziah. They served in this appointed order when they entered the temple of God, following the procedures laid down by their ancestor Aaron as God, the God of Israel, had commanded him. The rest of the Levites are as follows, from the sons of Amram, Shubael, from the sons of Shubael, Judiah. Concerning Rehabiah, from his sons, Ishia was the first. From the Israelites, Shelomoth, from the sons of Shelomoth, Jehoth. The sons of Hebron, Jeria the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. The son of Uziel, Micah, and from the sons of Micah, Shamir. The brother of Micah was Ishia, and from the sons of Ishia, Zechariah. The sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi. The son of Josiah, Bino. The sons of Merari from Josiah, Bino, Shoam, Zachar, and Ibri. From Mali, Eliezer, who had no sons. From Kish, Jeremiel, the son of Kish. And from the sons of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth, these were the Levites by their families. 
They also cast lots, the same as their kindred the sons of Aaron had done, in the presence of David the king, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the leaders of the priestly in Levitical families. The families of the oldest and youngest brothers were treated the same. Next David and the worship leaders selected some from the family of Azaph, Heman, and Jeduthun for special service in preaching and music. Here is the roster of names and assignments, from the family of Azaph, Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asarela, they were supervised by Azaph, who spoke for God backed up by the king's authority. From the family of Jeduthun there were six sons, Gedalia, Ziri, Jeshea, Shimi, Hashabia, and Mattathiah, they were supervised by their father Jeduthun, who preached and accompanied himself with the zither, he was responsible for leading the thanks and praise to God. From the family of Heman, Bukia, Matania, Uziel, Shubael, Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedalti, Romantiezer, Joshbakasha, Malothi, Hothar, and Mahaziath. These were the sons of Heman the king's seer, they supported and assisted him in his divinely appointed work. God gave Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. Under their father's supervision they were in charge of leading the singing and providing musical accompaniment in the work of worship in the sanctuary of God, Azaph, Jeduthun, and Heman took their orders directly from the king. They were well trained in the sacred music, all of them masters. There were 288 of them. They drew names at random to see who would do what. Nobody, whether young or old, teacher or student, was given preference or advantage over another. The first name from Azaf's family was Joseph and his twelve sons and brothers, second, Gedalia and his twelve sons and brothers, third, Zachar and his twelve sons and brothers, fourth, Isri and his twelve sons and brothers, fifth, Nethaniah and his twelve sons and brothers, sixth, Bukia and his twelve sons and brothers, seventh, Jezerela and his twelve sons and brothers, eighth, Jeshea and his twelve sons and brothers, ninth, Matania and his twelve sons and brothers, tenth, Shimi and his twelve sons and brothers, eleventh, Azrael and his twelve sons and brothers, twelfth, Hashabiah and his twelve sons and brothers, thirteenth, Shubael and his twelve sons and brothers, fourteenth, Mattathiah and his twelve sons and brothers, fifteenth, Jeremoth and his twelve sons and brothers, sixteenth, Hananiah and his twelve sons and brothers, seventeenth, Joshbakasha and his twelve sons and brothers, eighteenth, Hanani and his twelve sons and brothers, nineteenth, Malothi and his twelve sons and brothers, twentieth, Eliatha and his twelve sons and brothers, twenty-first, Hothar and his twelve sons and brothers, twenty-second, Gedalti and his twelve sons and brothers, twenty-third, Mahaziath and his twelve sons and brothers, twenty-fourth, Romantiezer and his twelve sons and brothers. The teams of security guards were from the family of Korah, Meshalemia son of Kore, one of the sons of Azaph. Meshalemia's sons were Zechariah, the firstborn, followed by Gedeel, Zebediah, Japhneel, Elam, Jehohanan, and Elihoanai, seven sons. Obadidim's sons were Shemaiah, the firstborn, followed by Jehazabad, Joah, Sacher, Nethanel, Amiel, Issachar, and Pulathai, God blessed him with eight sons. His son Shemaiah had sons who provided outstanding leadership in the family, Othni, Rephael, Obed, and Elzabad, his relatives Elihu and Semachiah were also exceptional. These all came from the line of Obed-Edom, all of them outstanding and strong. There were sixty-two of them. Meshalemia had eighteen sons and relatives who were outstanding. The sons of Hosea the Merarite were Shimri, 
he was not the firstborn but his father made him first, then Hilkiah, followed by Tabaliah and Zechariah. Hosea accounted for thirteen. These teams of security guards, supervised by their leaders, kept order in the temple of God, keeping up the traditions of their ancestors. They were all assigned to their posts by the same method regardless of the prominence of their families, each picked his gate assignment from a hat. Shelemiah was assigned to the east gate, his son Zechariah, a shrewd counselor, got the north gate. Obadidim got the south gate, and his sons pulled duty at the storehouse. Shuppim and Hosea were posted to the west gate and the Shalaketh gate on the high road. The guards stood shoulder to shoulder, six Levites per day on the east, four per day on the north and on the south, and two at a time at the storehouse. At the open court to the west, four guards were posted on the road and two at the court. These are the teams of security guards from the sons of Korah and Merari. Other Levites were put in charge of the financial affairs of the Temple of God. From the family of Laban, all Jershonites, came Jehili, and the sons of Jehili, Zetham, and his brother Joel. They supervised the finances of the sanctuary of God. From the Amramites, the Israelites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites, Shubael, descended from Gershom the son of Moses, was the chief financial officer. His relatives through Eliezer, his son Rehabiah, his son Jesheah, his son Joram, his son Zikri, and his son Shelemith. Shelemith and his relatives were in charge of valuables consecrated by David the king, family heads, and various generals and commanders from the army. They dedicated the plunder that they had gotten in war to the work of the worship of God. In addition, everything that had been dedicated by Samuel the seer, Saul son of Kish, Abner son of Neh, and Joab son of Zeruiah, anything that had been dedicated, ever, was the responsibility of Shelemith and his family. From the family of the Israelites, Kenaniah and sons were appointed as officials and judges responsible for affairs outside the work of worship and sanctuary. From the family of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 well-qualified men, were responsible for administration of matters related to the worship of God and the king's work in the territory west of the Jordan. According to the family tree of the Hebronites, Jeria held pride of place. In the fortieth year of David's reign, his last, the Hebron family tree was researched and outstanding men were found at Jazer in Gilead, namely, Jeria and 2,700 men of his extended family, David the king made them responsible for administration of matters related to the worship of God and the work of the king in the territory east of the Jordan, the Reubenites, the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Here is the listing of the sons of Israel by family heads, commanders, and captains, and other officers who served the king in everything military. Army divisions were on duty a month at a time for the twelve months of the year. Each division comprised 24,000 men. First Division, First Month, Jashabim son of Zabdiel was in charge with 24,000 men. He came from the line of Perez. He was over all the army officers during the first month. The division for the second month, Dodai the Ahohite was in charge, 24,000 men, Mikloth was the leader of his division. Commander for the third month, Benaiah son of Jehoiada the priest with 24,000 men. This was the same Benaiah who was a mighty man among the thirty and their chief. His son Amizabad was in charge of the division. Fourth division for the fourth month, Asahel brother of Joab, his son Zebediah succeeded him, 24,000 men. Fifth division, fifth month, Commander Shamhat the Israelite, 
24,000 men. 6th Division, 6th month, Ira son of Ikesh the Tekoite, 24,000 men. 7th Division, 7th month, Helez the Pelonite, an Ephraimite, 24,000 men. 8th Division, 8th month, Sibakai the Hushathite, a Zerahite, 24,000 men. 9th Division, 9th month, Abizer the Anathathite, a Benjaminite, 24,000 men. 10th Division, 10th month, Maharai the Natafathite, a Zerahite, 24,000 men. 11th Division, 11th month, Baniah the Parathamite, an Ephraimite, 24,000 men. 12th Division, 12th month, Heldai the Natafathite from the family of Othmiel, 24,000 men. Administrators of the affairs of the tribes, for Reuben, Eliezer son of Zikri, for Simeon, Shephatiah son of Maka, for Levi, Hashabiah son of Kemuel, for Aaron, Zadok, for Judah, Elihu, David's brother, for Issachar, Omri son of Michael, for Zebulun, Ishmael son of Obadiah, for Naphtali, Jeremoth son of Azrael, for Ephraim, Hosei son of Azaziah, for one half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel son of Padiah, for the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Ido son of Zechariah, for Benjamin, Jezel son of Abner, for Dan, Azrael son of Jerahem, these are the administrative officers assigned to the tribes of Israel. David didn't keep a count of men under the age of twenty, because God had promised to give Israel a population as numerous as the stars in the sky. Joab son of Zeruiah started out counting the men, but he never finished. God's anger broke out on Israel because of the counting. As it turned out, the numbers were never entered into the court records of King David. The king's storage facilities were supervised by Asmaveth son of Adiel. Jonathan son of Uzziah was responsible for the warehouses in the outlying areas. Ezri son of Kalub was in charge of the field workers on the farms. Shimi the Ramathite was in charge of the vineyards and Zabdi the Shifmite was in charge of grapes for the wine vats. Balhanan the Gedarite was in charge of the olive and sycamore fig trees in the western hills, and Josh was in charge of the olive oil. Shitri the Sharonite was in charge of herds grazing in Sharon and Shaphat son of Adlai was in charge of herds in the valley. Obu the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels, Jediah the Maranathite was in charge of the donkeys, and Jazize the Hagrite was in charge of the flocks, these were the ones responsible for taking care of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, a wise and literate counselor, and Jehiel son of Hakmoni, were responsible for raising the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor, Hushai the Archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was later replaced by Jehoiada son of Benaiah and by Abiathar, Joab was commander of the king's army. David called together all the leaders of Israel, tribal administrators, heads of various governmental operations, military commanders and captains, stewards in charge of the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, everyone who held responsible positions in the kingdom. King David stood tall and spoke, Listen to me, my people, I fully intended to build a permanent structure for the chest of the covenant of God, God's footstool. But when I got ready to build it, God said to me, You may not build a house to honor me, you've done too much fighting, killed too many people. God chose me out of my family to be king over Israel forever. First he chose Judah as the lead tribe, then he narrowed it down to my family, and finally he picked me from my father's sons, pleased to make me the king over all Israel. And then from all my sons, and God gave me many, he chose my son Solomon to sit on the throne of God's rule over Israel. He went on to say, 
Your son Solomon will build my house and my courts, I have chosen him to be my royal adopted son, and I will be to him a father. I will guarantee that his kingdom will last if he continues to be as strong-minded in doing what I command and carrying out my decisions as he is doing now. And now, in this public place, all Israel looking on and God listening in, as God's people, obey and study every last one of the commandments of your God so that you can make the most of living in this good land and pass it on intact to your children, ensuring a good future. And you, Solomon my son, get to know well your father's God, serve him with a whole heart and eager mind, for God examines every heart and sees through every motive. If you seek him, he'll make sure you find him, but if you abandon him, he'll leave you for good. Look sharp now. God has chosen you to build his holy house. Be brave, determined. And do it. Then David presented his son Solomon with the plans for the temple complex, porch, storerooms, meeting rooms, and the place for atoning sacrifice. He turned over the plans for everything that God's Spirit had brought to his mind, the design of the courtyards, the arrangements of rooms, and the closets for storing all the holy things. He gave him his plan for organizing the Levites and priests in their work of leading and ordering worship in the house of God, and for caring for the liturgical furnishings. He provided exact specifications for how much gold and silver was needed for each article used in the services of worship, the gold and silver lampstands and lamps, the gold tables for consecrated bread, the silver tables, the gold forks, the bowls, and the jars, and the incense altar. And he gave him the plan for sculpting the cherubs with their wings outstretched over the chest of the covenant of God, the cherubim throne. Here are the blueprints for the whole project as God gave me to understand it, David said. David continued to address Solomon, Take charge. Take heart. Don't be anxious or get discouraged. God, my God, is with you in this, he won't walk off and leave you in the lurch. He's at your side until every last detail is completed for conducting the worship of God. You have all the priests and Levites standing ready to pitch in, and skillful craftsmen and artisans of every kind ready to go to work. Both leaders and people are ready. Just say the word. Then David the king addressed the congregation, My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this. But he's young and untested and the work is huge, this is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us. I've done my best to get everything together for building this house for my God, all the materials necessary, gold, silver, bronze, iron, lumber, precious and varicolored stones, and building stones, vast stockpiles. Furthermore, because my heart is in this, in addition to and beyond what I have gathered, I'm turning over my personal fortune of gold and silver for making this place of worship for my God, 3,000 talents, about 113 tons, of gold, all from Ophir, the best, and 7,000 talents, 214 tons, of silver for covering the walls of the buildings, and for the gold and silver work by craftsmen and artisans, and now, how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? Ready and willing, the heads of families, leaders of the tribes of Israel, commanders and captains in the army, stewards of the king's affairs, stepped forward and gave willingly. They gave 5,000 talents, 188 tons, and 10,000 derricks, 185 pounds, of gold, 10,000 talents of silver. 377 tons, 18,000 talents of bronze, 679 tons, and 100,000 talents, 3,775 tons, of iron.
Anyone who had precious jewels put them in the treasury for the building of the temple of God in the custody of Jehiel the Gershonite. And the people were full of a sense of celebration, all that giving. And all given willingly, freely. King David was exuberant. David blessed God in full view of the entire congregation, Blessed are you, God of Israel, our Father from of old and forever. To you, O God, belong the greatness and the might. The glory, the victory, the majesty, the splendor. Yes. Everything in heaven, everything on earth. The kingdom all yours. You've raised yourself high over all. Riches and glory come from you. Your ruler over all. You hold strength and power in the palm of your hand. To build up and strengthen all. And here we are, O God, our God, giving thanks to you. Praising your splendid name. But me, who am I, and who are these my people, that we should presume to be giving something to you? Everything comes from you, all we're doing is giving back what we've been given from your generous hand. As far as you're concerned, we're homeless, shiftless wanderers like our ancestors, our lives mere shadows, hardly anything to us. God, our God, all these materials, these piles of stuff for building a house of worship for you, honoring your holy name, it all came from you. It was all yours in the first place. I know, dear God, that you care nothing for the surface, you want us, our true selves, and so I have given from the heart, honestly and happily. And now see all these people doing the same, giving freely, willingly, what a joy. O oh God, God of our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep this generous spirit alive forever in these people always, keep their hearts set firmly in you. And give my son Solomon an uncluttered and focused heart so that he can obey what you command, live by your directions and counsel, and carry through with building the temple for which I have provided. David then addressed the congregation, Bless God, your God. And they did it, blessed God, the God of their ancestors, and worshipped reverently in the presence of God and the King. The very next day they butchered the sacrificial animals and offered in the worship of Israel to God a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, a thousand sheep, and in addition drink offerings and many other sacrifices. They feasted all day, eating and drinking before God, exuberant with joy. Then they ceremonially reenacted Solomon's coronation, anointing David's son before God as their leader, and Zadok as priest. Solomon sat on the throne of God as king in place of David his father. And everything went well, all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders of the people, including all the sons of King David, accepted Solomon as their king and promised their loyalty. Solomon rode high on a crest of popular acclaim, it was all God's doing. God gave him position and honor beyond any king in Israel before him. David son of Jesse ruled over all Israel. He was king for forty years. He ruled from Hebron seven years and from Jerusalem thirty-three. He died at a ripe old age, full of days, wealth, and glory. His son Solomon ruled after him. The history of David the king, from start to finish, is written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer, Nathan the prophet, and Gad the seer, including a full account of his rule, his exploits, and the times through which he and Israel and the surrounding kingdoms passed.